know, and I thought it would be great to get your, uh, just your experiences, to share your experiences on what it's like to be teaching about religion and, and particularly what it's like to be teaching about Sikhism in your classroom. Sure. I think one of the things that um, is important to note, in, and we have a fabulous curriculum, and, and one of the things we try to really get to would be um, to have the kids have a better understanding of world culture, and religion is one part of culture, certainly. And I had the opportunity, as many of my colleagues have, to hear court present to the social studies department. And, um, you know, there are so many world religions, and we focus largely on Western religions, but we, we try to talk about some Eastern religions as well. And it occurred to me at one of those core meetings that I attended that um, six are are really not this sort of far removed faith, they're our neighbors, you know, with a quarter of a million six here in the United States. Um, this is a group that's very relevant to our students. Um, and from talking, you know, with my students that are fairly diverse about some of the misconceptions um, that exist and some of the confusion between, you know, who is Muslim and who is Sikh and uh, you know, so we're trying to really try to get to the truth of, of what really is about your neighbor and the person mm -hmm. sitting next to you or the person that you might see um, in your in your day to day. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you, uh, as a teacher, you know, how do you, how do you sort of feel about you know, uh, teaching uh, about religion in the classroom? Like, what are some of the concerns that you might have mm -hmm. sort of in terms of, of you know, having the knowledge to do so? Sure. And, and, and how have you uh, looked into other resources that can help support that, mm -hmm. that process? Um, I think that it, it can be intimidating to teach world religion because I don't claim to be an expert about world religion. You know, I think that I wouldn't even be so bold as to say that I'm an expert about my own religion. There's so much to know. There's so much history and different sects of different religions. So um, I think that the resources are from the curriculum. The resources come from, we've got some very good vetted resources that we use. Um, Culture Grams is one such resource, but there certainly are others. And the students are a good resource. You know, I look to my students that practice Hinduism to tell me things that I didn't know before um, about their faith, or my Jewish students to tell me about the faith that they practice. So there are resources all around us. I think we just always have to make sure that they are reliable resources that yeah. we're passing on. Yeah, and creating those partnerships and relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Uh, so going back to the, the you know, teaching about Sikhism in the classroom, uh, and you mentioned that you wanted to teach about Sikhism because you wanted to make it more about just some, you know, an ancient religion from sure. India. But mm -hmm. uh, reminding the students that Sikhs are your neighbors, Sikhs are your your colleagues at work, your your fellow students in sure. your classroom. So, how, what are some of the ways that, that you know that can happen in the classroom? Like what are some of the discussions I should mm -hmm. say sure. that come up in the classroom around that? Well, I think one of the things, because we're looking at world, world religion as a whole, is that one of the things kids come to find as they're studying world religion is that there are more similarities than there are differences. When we look at major teachings, there's so much overlap from one faith to, a to the next. And, you know, essentially they're all focused on being peaceful and serving others and gratitude. So I think really looking at regardless of what their faith is. They are, they are more alike than they are different mm -hmm. than anybody else that's around them. Yeah. And I guess as a final question, what, um, just some personal reflections on you know, what, uh, you know, what value you see in teaching about religion and, mm -hmm. and sort of you know, what some of the experiences have been in your classroom or changes that you've seen maybe in, in uh, your, your students mm -hmm. and interacting with sure. each other after you've done these, these lessons about religion? Mm -hmm. um, I think that they continue to increase their insight. Um, I think that we're always looking to have more cooperation than conflict in the world. Yeah. You know, as world citizens, that's a responsibility mm -hmm. that we have. And hopefully, you know, as our young people are becoming those world citizens, that, that's a message that they can convey, that they can look at things with a more critical eye in order to sort maybe some of the sensationalism 
from the facts so that they're not judging other people mm -hmm. um, or holding on to prejudices that are unfounded. Mm -hmm. So does that answer that question? That totally answers the question. Okay. Thank you. Good. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. We appreciate being here. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Identity. It's part of our, our physical identity, which is why a turban is very sacred. And somebody said, one of the questions was, why don't we, why don't, aren't you allowed to touch the turban? Um, because it's the same thing, like, you wouldn't want somebody to come up and just, like, touch your hair, right? That'd be kind of uncomfortable, wouldn't it? People do that to me all the time. It's incredibly uncomfortable. And so, I mean, if you were to be like, hey, I just, um, I'm kind of curious, like, what is, your turban feel like? Some people might say, yeah, go ahead and feel it. Some people might say, get away from me. <laughs> it's up to them. It's their personal choice, right? So like, so on some days, I might be like, yeah, sure, touch my hair. Other days, I'm like, no, leave me alone, right? It's just a matter of personal preference. But it's something that you generally, just like I wouldn't just go up to somebody and touch any part of them. Like, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't go touch somebody's shoulder. It'd be, be weird, you know? So it's. It's just, it's, it's a, a level of res having mutual respect. Mm -hmm. Better? I have a question. Yeah, she's dying to ask this. Um, how long is your hair? My hair is very long. <laughs> where is it like on your, like, where is it like, yeah, your how hands long does it go, does it go to the end of your feet, your back? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you. they're dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny what they fixate on? <laughs>
culture? Um, culture is your beliefs in the religion you practice. Um, culture is basically a practice or relationship a person or a group of people believe in. And there's several characteristics to the culture, like food, um, language, education, clothing, um, arts and music, phrases. Yeah. If crush on someone different, would you be the same person? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're just like yes. someone else. Yeah. 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 It's sixth grade. I hope that that's true. That you would. Yeah. Sixth grade, you can't find a true love in sixth grade, guys. Get pushed. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if I changed your traditions, you would not be the same person. Right? Do you talk about? No. I mean, there. Go ahead. If you talk about, like, Christmas, you're talking about your Christian culture. Okay, yeah, all right. So, oh, that's, you brought up a good point, though. You so we kind of talked about it before, how religion is not culture, or culture is not only religion, but religion does have potentially a culture attached to it. I, uh, I'm Canadian, so I recently moved to Maryland a month ago, so I, I would identify myself as being a Canadian. I would identify, so that's my nationality, right? That's the, the, uh, the country that I come from. Many of you would say you're American. Uh, so um, in terms of my religion, I would say that I'm a Sikh. And, and that's not to say, I was born into a Sikh family, but I, I, I truly identify as a Sikh. Right? It, it's not just something that I was born into. In terms of my culture, I would say that I'm, I'm, I'm part of Canadian culture, but I'm also Punjabi. Right? My, my family comes from Punjab, which is uh, the region that we're trying to point to now, uh, a region in India. And that culture, although we don't uh, often go to Punjab, it's still something that influences the way that I, uh, the music, it influences some of the music that I listen to, it influences some of the dancing that I do, it influences some of the food that I eat, but also some of the ways that I interact with each other are influenced by, by my, my two cultures, which is Canadian and Punjabi. Okay, so Punjab is a region. So not everybody in Punjab is a Sikh, right? Just like not everybody in America is a Christian, right? So Punjabi is the region, the area that we're from. Now it might, I mean, it's not exactly the same thing as saying Indian, because that's a nationality. And this is a region with its own specific culture. And I really like the idea of what they're saying about talking about your culture and everything. When you first watched the video yesterday and you saw the turban and the hair, a lot of the a lot of what you expressed was, wow, that's weird. If we talked about culture more, would we see things less weird? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the more we talk about it, the more we're not all expected to be one thing. The more we talk about it, the more normal it is to be everything. You know what I'm saying? I tell them as an adult, I see my friends always putting, you know, older adult, I see my friends always putting, God's not letting the school anymore. This is terrible. And so introducing the religion um, aspect of our social institution unit, I said, God is allowed in the school, but we allow every God in the school. Yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. and that's the whole difference to it. Yeah, yeah. And it's and, about religion, right? It's not. And we have one of the little girls sitting there was a Mormon, yeah. and we have a little girl who I'm pretty sure is Islam, but she's not sure 
too much, I guess, yeah, yeah. Not, a, not a strict structure. Yeah. But these kids are going home and trying to figure out what they are. Yeah, yeah. And another little student, I want you to meet her. Yeah. You'll get the biggest kick out of this. But she came to me <laughs> yesterday, and she's, or two days ago, and she said, Mrs. Malik, my, mother, my grandmother was reading a newspaper article, and it how, says how Muslims are having more children than Christians. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, the Christians <laughs> will be... <laughs> You know, there will not be as many Christians, yeah. and there will be more Muslims, yeah. and what a terrible world it's going to be. Yeah. And I just wanted to tell her yeah. that Muslims are peace-loving people. Yeah. It's only the extremists we have yeah. to worry about. Yeah. I said, well, did you tell her? No, she won't listen to me. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, but this, is, but this is why we do this, because it's almost like at this age, they're soaking in information. You can open yeah. them up. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good brainwash, yeah. and it's propaganda. Yeah. And yeah. that's another lesson I have to introduce <laughs> okay. to that propaganda. It's a yeah. tool, negative yeah. or positive. It depends Absolutely. how we use exactly. it. And do your research. Exactly. Think critically. Yeah. Engage in dialogue. Meet people. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And in another class, they were saying weird. And I have a student who has, um, who is Jewish and Christian, mm -hmm. his parents. And he got so upset when they said that. And I said, you have to listen to the context in which they're saying it. I don't think they were saying it weird as a negative yeah. aspect. It's, just, as it is, and it's yeah. weird. strange. It's exactly. And it's yeah. okay. Like, and he was outraged, and I kind of had to calm his yeah. outrage down. But it was also informative for the kids who said weird because they realized they have to be careful how they say things. Mm -hmm. they, they should have said it's interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, to them it was weird. And yeah, there's so. so many lessons that can come out of this, which is great, right? Yeah. There's lessons yeah. in terms of how to engage <laughs> yep. with difference, right? Yep. There's lessons in terms of how to sort of see things beyond what you traditionally see as being normal, yeah. right? like how to understand that. And, and the diversity is yeah. great. Yeah. And, and we're learning, because our next unit is conflict. Yeah. And so we're learning mm -hmm. that historically the diversity did not exist due to technology, due to transportation, yeah. due to communication and, yeah. you know, the internet and everything. So we are just learning how to deal with this diversity. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a pretty new thing for our world to deal with this diversity. Yeah. And so that's what another thing I'm trying to equip them, that our diversity shouldn't be a conflict. It should mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. interesting.